President Barack Obama paid tribute on Wednesday to fencer Ibtihaj Mohamed, who in Rio will become the first U.S. Olympian ever to compete while wearing a hijab, the headscarf of a Muslim woman. Uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar. Uh, Obama's visit to the Islamic Society of Baltimore Mosque recently, uh, that was his first visit uh, to a U.S. mosque uh, after seven years in the White House. A lot of people were saying, you know, it's about time. But this was clearly kind of to hit back at a lot of the anti-Islamic rhetoric we're hearing all around the world, but particularly here in the U.S. Uh, ever since uh, the San Bernardino attacks, that's been a debate that has uh, popped up again uh, most recently. But, you know, uh, okay, first time uh, we ever see an athlete from the U.S. wearing a hijab. I think that's a pretty big deal and actually very shocking, uh, you know, for a very progressive uh, country like the U.S. I think it's a great thing. But why is this such a big deal? Um, I found this to be so interesting because, look, I think we need to talk about this because a lot of people in America, when you, when, when you listen to the GOP debates, when you have people like Donald Trump talking about banning Muslims, when you have people like Ted Cruz talking about only letting Christian refugees in from Syria, sure. you know, um, it really makes you realize there's a lot of people who would not call this woman American only because she's wearing a hijab. Now, I was lucky to grow up in a big city uh, where I was exposed to all sorts of different cultures. So for me, this isn't crazy. You're from London, and it's the same thing for you. But a lot of the country, they don't see people with hijabs very often. And to them, this girl's just as Islamic as, you know, some woman, you know, from, from Jordan or something. So I think it's important to talk about these things. And we, we need to start looking at these people in a different light because we're all Americans at the end of the day. I'm, I'm sorry to sound corny and cliche, but how else can I say it? Right, no, and that's fair enough, and that's legitimate. I, it's definitely empowering, and it is definitely a, a, a step forward. It, and it's great because obviously the, the view, a lot of the criticism that is, you know, the cultural, uh, cultural criticism that comes is about the placement of women within society and how they're viewed. And we certainly do a fair share of criticism on that. And I'm, yeah. you know, being very critical. So, so to see something like this under the, under the American flag is obviously phenomenal and is in, highly empowering for her. And as you say, starts to break down the barriers, that normalization, that the, the, the stripping away of the stigmatization, the, the, the integration aspects is very, very powerful. And it does show, again, you, you, you said you're fearful of sounding corny. I'm now fearful of doing it because it does show the power of sport, the power of sport, the importance of sport as bringing around social change. And I think, you know, and that if, if the Olympics stand for anything these days, and I question in a, in, a, in a world where we do have ISIS and where we do have a world where, all of the problems that we have, the, the validity in having a multi-billion dollar jamboree, particularly in somewhere like Rio, where they have so many infrastructural problems, so much, so much wealth inequality, to go and spend billions of dollars on stadiums for a country where the buses don't even run, you question the validity in that. But when you hear stories about this and stories about integration and arms around the world and all of those sentiments, those slightly saccharine sentiments, but there's legitimacy to it, then you can put a face, if you can put a face and a personality to American Muslims, phenomenal. Yeah, great. And, and you know, we're going to continue having this problem uh, w w with identity like this uh, as long as we have politicians uh, on the far right in the GOP who are constantly echoing those voices of those people who, 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 who clearly have hatred towards these people. Instead of trying to calm them down and tell them that we're all Americans, they, they seem to be fanning the flames and kind of running off of that in order to get you know, on that ballot. And that, that for me is perhaps the saddest part because at the end of the day, it's for their own well-being, for their own political gains, right? Sure, sure. And they're, they're just echoing this, this hatred. And, and for me, that's the saddest part. But you know, uh, I think it's sad, you know, 2016, it's about time. I, I think it's about time we got with the program. Uh, good luck to you, Ibtihaj.